You're listening to Journaling with PT. I am your host, artist PT Russell. This is a podcast that highlights creative voices and emerging artists from all around the world. Please stay tuned for my conversation with fine artist Miss Sandy McKenzie. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Journaling with PT podcast. Today, I have Miss Sandy McKenzie. She is a classically trained artist who has been painting for over 50 years. She is also an art instructor and the proud owner of Portraits by Gauguin Gallery and Studio. Sandy, welcome to the podcast. Hi, everybody. Hi, PT. Thank you. (laughs) And how are you today, my dear? Freezing. <laughs> I know the weather is is it's uh, cold. Yeah, it, it is not cool. It's cold. It's been cold, frigid. It is. Yeah. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Born and raised here. This is it. <laughs> yes. And how have the life drawing classes been going? Well, the life drawing—they're picking up at Durham mm-hmm. College. They're getting more people all the time, so that's going well. Okay, that's good. I had meant to check it out to see how it is. And I know this is a, not a, a question I had, had, had anticipated asking, but I'm curious about it, about okay. what goes on in the life drawing class. That's okay. Yeah, everyone does their own thing. There's no mm-hmm. instruction. The model, we've got professional models. They do a really good job. Mm-hmm. And you just, there's easels provided. You just pick a spot and do your drawings. And then we'll change the pose after half an hour. And then we might do a pose for an hour and a half. So everyone does their own thing. There's no instruction. Wow. Yeah, I I intended to do that. I had the fine pleasure, by the way, of meeting you a little while back and also had the honor of being instructed by you. (laughs) No, it was nice. So that was, oh, thank you. Goodness. You were extremely patient with me. Uh, and my initial fumblings <laughs> I had a rewarding experience learning you know all the basics of well not all of them a lot of basics of oil painting at least under your tutelage so that was great uh, the apple I think it was the apple that you had me do first it uh, the is. apples the yeah. apples and the golden bowl and I was so proud of myself when I was done I was like well I couldn't believe that I'd actually done it <laughs> You did a really good job, and then you stepped into portraits, and that's a little bit harder. Oh, that's yes, yeah, very difficult. It's a lot harder than it looks. You you see uh, the before and after, and think, okay, what happened in between? And with uh, with you, you show the process ever so diligently. Uh, you know, taking your time with uh, because I know some of us can be uh, <laughs> a, a bit of a headache. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, but you're a good painter. You just didn't do classical, so that was mm-hmm. new for you. Yeah, it was it was very new. And yeah, yeah so that was with the, with, like I said, with the apples, I was surprised I at how much was involved with just that. Because, uh, you know, in terms of creating the dimensions right, and whatnot, I had a clue. But by the time I was finished, I said, oh, well, this is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of values, a lot of values in an apple. You wouldn't think so, but, you know, mm. about seven different values between the reds, the yellows, the greens. There's a lot there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, also, I learned from you, palette knife, uh, you took some time out of your busy schedule to teach me about how to use the palette knife and how to paint with the palette knives. And it was uh, hmm, it's something very interesting, because I had my own technique that I had <laughs> mustered up oh. myself. <laughs> and then you showed me the correct way to do it. <laughs> No, that's, that's okay. You can kind of do whatever you want with a palette knife. Um, mm-hmm. Just don't paint like a brush. Some people paint like a brush. They dab, mm-hmm. dab, dab. And you've got to really swing that knife and have fun <laughs> with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so when, when were you first introduced to paint? When I was about eight. Because uh, my mom was an oil painter. So mm-hmm. she'd sit at the kitchen table every evening and paint. 
So I would paint with her and we'd go out on Saturdays and draw. We'd bring camp stools and go to the trees and that and draw. But so I painted after school just about every day with oil paints. Now, if she was a watercolor painter, I would have been a watercolor painter, but she was an oil painter. So I have mm -hmm. always done oil painting. And I started doing portrait portraits about the age of 10. I started painting like the Beatles and that at the age of 10, getting wow. into portraits. Uh, what, what were her subjects, your mom's subjects that she painted most? She did... Um, she did portraits and she did still life, but with the knife, she did mm -hmm. scenes of like Paris and London where it's raining and the people walking with umbrellas in the rain. Um, mm -hmm. She probably got them from magazines. I'm not sure, but, um, but yeah, she would do street scenes with um, a knife, but mainly with, um, with a brush. She did portraits, a lot of portraits. And you do beautiful portraits, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes, they are <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Uh, what Thank you. I like portraits. Uh, yeah, I can. I definitely. Uh, it's something to behold the, the the majesty of your drawing abilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite medium? I'm assuming oil, but I'm just taking a wild swing. Oil. It's oil, and then charcoal second. But I like oil the best. I like the way oil moves. Nothing moves like oil. It is. Mm -hmm. Um. It's fantastic how you can push the paint one way, pull the paint another way. Mm -hmm. It just moves for you so nice. Other paints don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the pushing and the pulling. I had to learn how to how, yeah. to, how to do that. Uh, but it's uh, it's amazing what you're able to create with the brushes. And you taught me about the different brushes, and also in refinement, right? And mm -hmm. how, how you would finish your your paintings. And so yeah, so it's that the movement of the paint, uh, of the oils that uh, attracted you to it. I mean, you were introduced uh, to it first, but. Yeah, because mm -hmm. she would have me paint flowers every day after school. She'd have me paint flowers so that I can make the petal turn and I had to pull the paint to make it turn or push a color another way to make it turn. So mm -hmm. she would always have me do flowers. And then I'd go to my other easel. I had two easels. And mm -hmm. then I'd go and paint like Paul McCartney or somebody. I'd go paint a portrait. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. And about your color mixing and your creating your palette. How did she approach that? Um, no, she, yeah, she would give me some hints on mm -hmm. it, but I'm really good at color. So when I see a picture, I can, um, I can pretty well match the color. And I use eight paints. So if you use eight colors, it's a lot easier instead of like 20, 50 different paint tubes. Mm -hmm. I use eight. So I know what my eight can do. I know exactly what I can make, how to make it. So I don't stumble trying to trying to mix color I can do it exactly because when you get used to eight colors you know what you're doing wow it's yeah. easier yeah that it's yeah it's easier said than done for for someone like me there's a lot <laughs> to learn with oils it's uh it's amazingly vast and in, uh, in its depth yeah it is study. funny they say um painting is easy but once you know how it's very hard <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when yeah. you don't know how to paint it's really easy <laughs> and you did a beautiful rendering of Caravaggio I believe it's Caravaggio's 1603 classic the oh, Atonement yeah. of Christ and yeah. yeah to me it looks exactly like the paintings I've seen of it I mean, of course I haven't seen them in person but yeah I the ones and how did you I, I, I suppose it's just all of the years of experience you would have put into, into that painting um it is, and how to make it classical, how to soften the edges. It's, um, I could draw. I could always draw, but like I said, every Saturday my mom and I went out and she'd teach me to draw, so I could always do that. And the colors for the Caravaggio, they're the colors I use. So mm -hmm. he uses the eight colors I do. So um, in that painting, anyway, was the eight colors. So mm -hmm. it wasn't hard to mix any of those colors. And I'm still working on drawing the people, like, you know, getting the features right and everything. Cause um, there's seven people in that painting. It's very tiny. Mm -hmm. So it takes a while. It's easier if you just have a big portrait of one or two people to get the features, but, but it, but that's okay. It's going okay. But he, um, his colors are what I use so I can match anything in that painting. It was, mm -hmm. it worked out really good. Yes. Uh, how, how do you go about capturing the contrast of darks and lights so well, especially like how he, yeah, he he was like a specialist with with the light, the lighting. Kira yeah, his um, lighting I know because don't forget I'm a photographer, 
Um, oh, I haven't forgotten. As soon as I was 19, I opened my studio, Portraits by Gauguin, when I was 19. And I've been a pro professional photographer. I'm a portrait photographer. That's what I've always been. That's mm -hmm. why I can do portraits. I know the face. And um, I've always retouched portraits for other studios in Durham region. Of the eyes were shut, they give me the picture. And with pencil crayons, I could open the bride's eyes or anybody's eyes. So I've always done that. Um, so I do know the face. I know portraits. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's not too bad to, to get all your contrast going. You know what you're looking for mm -hmm. um, to get the contrast and to get the nice highlights. So that you know exactly what you're looking for when you have photographed the face. Mm -hmm. for you know 30 something years almost 40 years you know what you're looking for that makes it that makes me a better painter because mm -hmm. people are surprised how well I know the light and if the light's not there in a the picture I will put it there mm -hmm. because I will have my light side my dark side and I know exactly where it will be because I'm a photographer so that's a step up that really helped oh, yeah. <laughs> better than other artists have because you have another eyes, almost like you have another set of eyes that you're looking at. Because I know light. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why Rembrandt's my favorite, because we call it Rembrandt lighting. We use his lighting in portrait photography. It's called Rembrandt lighting. Mm -hmm. And we'll do it on purpose because his light was amazing as a painter. So, um, so I do know Rembrandt lighting. So it really helps. That's why a lot of people will come to me because they'll say, how do you know light so good? Well, I was a photographer. It's a big, you know, it's a big thing. So. Yes, especially for portraits, so yeah. capturing the face at certain angles. and Yeah, and some people, mm -hmm. they'll want a portrait done, but they give you a bad photo. Um, mm -hmm. It's just blasted with a flash. So you can make it look like window light because you know how being a portrait photographer. So, so that gave me, um, you know, so that made me a little bit better than some other artists because they're still trying to struggle with the light. I don't struggle with the light. So there's a step up right there, which is easier. Yeah, of artists for portraits would take a little bit of a photography course you'd have it made <laughs> wow that's a that's a great suggestion by the way great suggestion to do a, a photography course and yeah it'll help yeah. you to see the light to capture the light a lot better hopefully mm -hmm. yeah and what what influenced like your interest in like realism because i noticed that most of your your it's, portraits are very realistic yeah i'm a fine art painter mm -hmm. like everything mm -hmm. is high realism even my um my still life is high high realism too and I set them up myself all the objects and I do it with window light just as though I was doing a portrait always with window light so my still life are all window light too I know what I'm looking for I know how I want the light to go and I love realism I just that's why I like most of like most of the old masters I just love realism and I know people say oh why don't you just use a photo but you change it you're not mm -hmm. using the photo exactly you're making a lot of changes you're making lost edges lots of times the photo doesn't have lost edges and um, the masters have a lot of lost edges they have a way into their painting they have a way out of their painting it's so mm -hmm. interesting when you really look at yes, a painting. it is it is and you have all well, you have the, the portraits there, but there's, lots, there's a lot of still life that you have in your studio as well. <laughs> a lot of still life. Yeah, yeah I do how, a lot of still life. And how, how do you approach your, your still life as opposed to the portrait painting? Um, well, the still life is, is it's about the same as doing a portrait mm -hmm. painting. Like, I just love every detail about it. Um, right now, I've got a picture in front of me of I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got about 11 apples with a bunch of leaves. They were old apples, wild apples. So they got a lot of flaws in them and everything. So to me, every apple is like a portrait. I will work on one apple and get the little flaws, get the little dents. And um, it's like doing a portrait. Like it's, it's, it's fun to do because I want it to be exact. And then people always say, I could pick that up. And yeah, you can pretty well, it looks like. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm doing um, today. I'm getting these apples going. But I'll, there's like 11, but I'll do one at a time and I'll bring mm -hmm. it so that you can actually, looks like you can hold it, you can bite it. But I want all the flaws in it. They're really flawed. I think they mm -hmm. were on the ground. They're really messy and the leaves are really um, ripped and broken too. I was thinking I might put a worm or something oh, that'd be on cool. one of them because they were on the ground. They're really bad looking. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I'm just curious to see that the finished product now <laughs> when you're done. Oh yeah, it's going to look good, but it's very slow because again, mm -hmm. it's classical. So I've got lost edges. I just finished painting all the leaves at the back, mm -hmm. I've painted half of them out because they've got to disappear into the background. That's my lost edges. Mm -hmm. And then my found edges are on the right side of the picture because everything's a bit brighter. So there's my found edges. Right. So, and then I've got reflections in the table that it's sitting on. So it's a lot of work. 
Wow. But it's beautiful and it's so cathartic. It's a the process. It, it's uh, You lose yourself in it. Oh, you do. Yeah. You don't realize how many hours you've been painting. And mm-hmm. oil paint, the fact it stays wet. And if you have good oil paint brushes, they don't split. Mm-hmm. They don't go hard. Like you can paint like the whole day and your brushes stay so soft, so nice because they're oil brushes. They're not acrylic brushes. So mm-hmm. it makes it easier to paint too when you have good supplies. It yeah. makes a big difference. And one of the things that I really enjoy about the way you paint and the way at least you were teaching me was without the use of the mediums Uh, because I always thought you needed to have the spirits or the thinner uh, yeah in in the paint but you don't necessarily use those things no people think Mm -hmm. they don't like oil painting they say it stinks they say it's very smelly Mm -hmm. because they dip their brush in linseed oil and then they think they dip it in the paint and um, you don't want the oil till you know, near the end, because oil needs air to dry. So you don't want to seal it with your paint. And the problem is the paints we buy, there's oil in it. If you read the tubes of oil paint, there's already linseed oil in them. So you've already got your oil. So you don't need to keep dipping your brush in it. You've got it. And um, some people will use oil right away, but then you've got to use more oil, more oil. And I don't until the very near the end. When my picture is almost done, then I'll put some maybe oil on top, but it's already in my paint. I, I don't have the paints that don't have oil. They're very expensive. So mm-hmm. my paints do have oil, which um, you'd rather not, but they do. You know, when you squeeze a tube of paint, sometimes a lot of oil comes out. Yeah. That's a lot of oil. It's <laughs> but, a lot. Yeah. But I must say that, that there is a, a difference, a big difference when I start using the oils between oil and acrylic. Oh yeah, because I was like, okay, acrylic. This is the this is the thing here for the moment until I saw oil and uh, and the brightness, the vibrancy of the yeah. colors, and the ability to take your time and actually create layers. Oh yeah, <laughs> that don't dry out in five point five minutes. No, <laughs> that's the only thing. You'll have like seven paintings on the go because. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, after I work on this one, it will sit there and I'll move to another one. Then I'll move to another one. And I've got two wet from yesterday. You can just sit here to dry too. Unless Mm -hmm. you want to work on it each day. Like as I'm working on these apples, since it will be wet, I can go back Mm -hmm. to them tomorrow. The next day I can keep it going until I've got it brought to a finish. But um, I like the fact that they stay wet and that they move. Um, You can do that with acrylics too. You get like Mm -hmm. an extender and you can make the acrylics move. But um, I find the paintings don't have the richness. I find Mm -hmm. acrylics don't look anything as bright as an oil painting because the oil in the oil paint, it just just makes it pop. And acrylics, uh, if I walk in a gallery, I can spot the oil paintings across (laughs) the room. Sometimes though, Mm -hmm. I can't tell because it's a oil pastel. Mm -hmm. And then I think, wow, it's pastel, but it's oil. And, and I swear it was an oil painting and it's not, it's oil pastel. So they, they've got the same richness. They're just so nice. Yeah, they are. It's harder for them to see, to seal oil pastels though. You have to go through so much to seal them. Well, Uh, they're always under glass. Some of them are under glass. Right. If if they're under glass, but then I I think it's a photo and it's not, it's pastel, but Mm -hmm. you'd swear some of them are photos, but they are not, they're just so rich. Yeah, they are. And they, they're very rich mm-hmm. and they're very messy. So I, and I love the messiness of them. <laughs> uh, they're very unique because they're like crayons, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but I found that I preferred them over the soft pastels, the soft okay. pastels with the chalk, the chalky, yeah. and then the, the oils, the beautiful, but it's, it's messy and it's hard to seal unless you, you're going to put them behind, behind glass. Like right. you said, like you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And pastels, you got to wear a mask because you got that powder, not mm-hmm. oil, but the other ones, the chalky ones. You got that powder floating mm-hmm. in the air. And um, so it's dangerous too. So you got to wear a mask and gloves and um, no one else in the room with you because uh, mm-hmm. stuff floats. Yes. That's it's very, very true. Can you describe for our listeners the difference in technique between perhaps ex- an expressionist artist like Van Gogh and artists veering more into realism? Like, yeah, they, I guess someone like John Singer or Sargent or, or Rembrandt, like you mentioned Rembrandt yeah. earlier. They can go, they can go so very loose, eh? Like their mm-hmm. imagination is just going, they're, they're going loose. Whereas I'll use a little brush and I'm right up close. My face is right in the painting. I'm trying mm-hmm. to get every little detail where I, I think they stand back and they can go quite loose. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's great to have an imagination like that, but I don't, mine will be exactly what my picture is that I've set up. I, 
Um, to go loose, I use a knife. That's the only way I can go loose. I've even tried taking my glasses off, but then I can't see the darn thing. I was trying to do that, and I thought, mm-hmm. okay, because someone told me, take your glasses off, and you won't paint so fine. But then mm-hmm. I couldn't see it good enough to, you know, <laughs> to do anything. And I've been told, too, to tie my brush to the end of a long stick. And then that way, it won't make me stick my face in the painting and paint up close, like, Mm -hmm. um, because I don't hold the length of my brush. My brushes could be an inch long for all I care. That's how close (laughs) I hold them. Whereas other people can hold the end of their brush and they go nice and loose. I think that's great. I just, um, I'm Mm -hmm. looking for fine detail. I'm looking for it to be like a photo. So I I can't go loose like that. But I will with a knife. With a knife, that's where my colors are crazy and my picture is not so exact. That's um, the only time, that's as loose as I can go. But um, mm-hmm. the, the old masters and that, or anyone that does abstracts, how they can just go loose like that, I think that's amazing, <laughs> but I can't do it all. I tried to take an abstract workshop, and she was getting so mad at me because I was making my picture look like something. Right. Um, it was not just going to be a mass of colors. It was going to be something. Mm-hmm. like So, um, yeah, so she wasn't happy with me. I just... I couldn't do it. it has to look like something it has to be something mm-hmm. oh well well everyone has this that's why there's so many different artists like i mentioned like van gogh he had his particular style and and obviously yeah. definitely john singer Sargent. I, I i love his art as well and then rembrandt is like something to- it's totally different mm-hmm. and that's why we have yeah. all of these uh, stylistic approaches to create creating art and that we can enjoy and everyone's different oh yeah <laughs> Oh, it this is, is so interesting. Yeah. Like I, I love everything. I can't do it, but mm-hmm. I love, um, I love, um, Lisa Johnson mm-hmm. is my, um, my favorite abstract painter. I think she's in Toronto. Um, her paintings are just, just gorgeous. Um, the colors are gorgeous. They're very abstract, but the colors, she knows colors. She's just got them connected so good. Mm-hmm. I just love her work. And I like a lot of people's work. Um, mm-hmm. I can't do stuff like that, but then my mom didn't. So I grew up doing right portraits and real and still life because that's what she did and she showed me exactly how to paint exactly how to draw um and she took lessons from a abstract artist believe it or not wow she painted with yeah she painted with carl clark he's an oshawa artist and she would paint with him um he he would visit a neighbor and she'd run over and get details from him and that meanwhile he's an abstract painter but he could also paint realism he showed her how to paint eyes how to paint the face and that but his paintings were abstract Hmm. so it's odd but yeah it's nice to be able to do a bit of everything i can't mine's mine's um real (laughs) it's always real yeah well that's that's your that's your brand and that's your style and, mm-hmm. and that's what I head to if I go to a mm-hmm. gallery the, the realism on the wall I'll just beeline for it because I think oh my goodness look at this like it's just amazing and then I'll look at the other stuff but I and I'll head to the dark I really like dark paintings so I like a lot of the old masters I like dark I don't want to be awoken with colors <laughs> <laughs> I love dark it's uh, very subtle <laughs> yeah and I like the colors a lot yeah but I so when I'm in yeah. a gallery I've been in a few galleries and they've called me their dark painter I'm not allowed to walk in with anything bright because <laughs> I'm the dark Oh wow! (laughs) Which is fine. Yes, and uh, for emerging artists who may be listening, and they don't have access to a wonderful teacher like yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. How can they best improve their technique if they were wanting to try a more realistic approach to painting? Well, you can watch videos. Mm -hmm. I I don't really watch videos, but Mm -hmm. you could um you could watch videos. But it's it's just a matter of looking. Um, Art is just to really, really, really look. That's what I tell the students. Like take a picture of an apple or have the apple sit in front of you and take like half an hour and look at it. You will see all the different shades. You will see how it moves, how it turns, where it dents, but you have to really look at it. My students always say, I didn't see that color. I didn't see that color. They're not really looking at it because it's not a trick. Mm -hmm. You just look at it, grab any photo right now and take a look and pick one item in it and see with the light how it turned maybe seven times that color might have moved and that's what you're looking for and they're they're always saying to me oh you see things we don't see I'm looking for it before I start a painting I'll hang on to the photo for maybe an hour and I'm sitting there looking at it thinking oh wow look at this look at this look at this Mm -hmm. and then I'll stick sticky notes all over my canvas too to remind myself look at that one area it was amazing I didn't know it had that color in it or something um so you can do that too like but if you just look at your picture, you can you can paint anything. You can draw anything. 
and you can paint anything. You just really, really have to look um, mm. or stand back and go loose, go very loose and mm. same thing. But, but even loose painting, you want it to look, well, <laughs> if it was an apple, you still want it to look like an apple, yes. even though it's loose with big brush strokes. So you still got to get your values. You still got to look at, look at all those shades of red or all those shades of green. Mm -hmm. You just have to look and to draw, you draw with straight lines because you can draw a straight line. You can't, you can't measure a curve line, mm -hmm. but you can draw a straight line. So if you take any picture and take, um, take a pencil and follow any line that's straight and it turns and it does this and this, but don't curve any of them, straighten them. And you can draw absolutely anything. Wow. That is a, that, that's good. It's good stuff there. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. That, so we can all do a straight line. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've met some people that can't, but usually mm -hmm. you can do a straight line. Yeah. You can find a straight line, especially if you watch um, or you see a picture of a movie star, um, even Brad Pitt or something. Look at the straight lines in the eyes that mm. made the eye. You can follow it with a pencil, all the lines that will, I don't mean like straight level, straight up and down, but this line is straight, then it stops and it mm -hmm. turns and it stops and it goes as far and then it stops. Do that to anybody and you can, you can draw the people no problem. Wow. That's a, that's a good tip. Thanks yeah. for that. Awesome. Now, Sandy, you also create stunning portraits in charcoal. Oh yeah. I like charcoal. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and portraits. Yeah. You're, you got to get the realism though, mm -hmm. because they are, you know, people hire you. So, um, but I, I did take a charcoal course for four years to make me a better, um, better drawer mm -hmm. with, um, with charcoal. I could always sketch, but I didn't know how to get it so soft and so classical. So I took classical charcoal drawing. So it's not just sketching. So that was, that was nice to do. Um, and again, it's a face, so I know the face, so mm -hmm. it makes it nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But what do you enjoy most about working with charcoal? Um, it's fast. fast. <laughs> it's really fast. And you can walk away from it. Um, I can do a little bit of a charcoal, then go do something else, come back. Oh, do a little bit more, go do something else. Whereas when I get the oil paint out, I plant myself there um, <laughs> because I've made the color. So I will be there for eight hours and paint. Whereas charcoal, I can do a little bit, go away. And you can see it take shape real fast. Whereas like oil painting, you got your blocking in, you got your under painting, mm -hmm. you have your first painting, you got your second painting, then you're getting to your final painting. Like it takes, it takes like five, six months. So charcoal, you can do a picture in two days of a face. It's, it's um, fast. Oh. It's nice. So that same line technique that you had shared earlier yeah. is what you would use to capture those remarkable likenesses that you do in charcoal, right? Yeah. First, I, mm. I would do the eye. I would look for the straight lines, and then I would take the eye, and I would measure it. And then the other eye sometimes is an eye across. Um, if you take the eye, turn the length of the eye, and then add half, that's usually where the bottom of the nose is. And then if you take... Um, the width of the eye, um, the eye open, that's usually between the nose and the top lip. And if you take the eye and the length of it again, that's usually from the middle line in the mouth to the bottom of the chin. Like mm -hmm. they're not set rules. Everyone's face is different, but it gets you going. Like once you start measuring like that, it'll start you off and get you going. So it makes it nice. Oh, that's a great. So I, I draw an eye. I look for the straight lines of the person's eye and I draw it. It's all straight lines. And then um, you'll transfer it to your nice paper and you'll start curving everything. But first, it's just straight lines, straight lines. Mm -hmm. um, there's even a video you can watch called Line Drawing. And um, it's of people and it is nothing but lines. So that's a good one. If you look up line drawings, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a good one to watch. It'll get you going with straight lines. Wow. Uh, this is uh, just so much to, to dig into right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be processing and experimenting again. Have you ever tried colored pencils at all? I have a, a bunch of colored pencils. Mm. Yeah, I have. But um, I'm trying to make them soft. And they said use mineral spirits, use baby oil, use vodka, all this stuff to make them hook together and go soft. And so far, I haven't found it. <laughs> um, so they look like pencil crayons, you know. Right. And I you can layer them and everything, too. But I wanted them to... Um, I'm trying to make them go soft as though it was a photo and okay. I, I don't know how to get them to go soft. I've looked at videos and I've tried what they've said, but I haven't seen it work. I think it all comes down to the paper. Okay. What paper you've used so that it will move. Um, because when I've seen them, I've seen them in Toronto a few times and I would have swore they were photographs and they were not, they were colored pencils, but they were so soft, like a photo. I, I was shocked, mm -hmm. but the artist wasn't there for me to ask her how she did it. 
but they were just amazing. I was so jealous to see it. I thought I can't make mine do that. Right. Um, I can get all the values and everything, but you can see it stopped. It's a, even when you get the values, Mm -hmm. you can still see the grit that it's a pencil crayon. Like it didn't go soft like a photo. So I don't know how they do it, but um, the vodka didn't work either. Like, or maybe once you drink the vodka, you don't know what you got anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. But they've even said that they've said baby oil and they've said mineral spirits. And I've even bought a blender. It's a special pencil called a blender and it didn't blend. So yeah, I don't know what we're looking for for that. I'll just stick to my oils. (laughs) Yes. but They move, they blend, they hook together. So with the charcoal is very dramatic with the black and white. And I, yeah, and I, I, but I, I like love... black and white photography. Mm, okay. Black and white portraits are my favorite. I, I'd rather have black and white photography than I would a painting. I like photography better than um, than paintings, actually. Really? Because black and white photography is just amazing. doesn't matter what it is. It is so amazing that, to me, it just blows paintings away. If you've got black and white photography, it's just stunning. So that's why I like the charcoal, too. And then people say, that looks like a photo. And I think, yay, I did what I wanted. It looks like a photo, right. <laughs> a black and white photo. Yeah, you're simply amazing. You know that, I'm sure. <laughs> you're amazing, PT. You are. You're colorful. I like all of the colors in your paintings. You you really like a lot of color. Yes, I which do. Is, yeah, which is different for me. But yeah, you're very, you like a lot of color. Your, your pictures are very nice. They wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that very much. So in closing, I know you'd mentioned uh, Rembrandt as one of your favorite artists. Uh-huh. At who else's work do you really uh, admire I like um I like Rembrandt I like um I like Monet in that too and mm. um you know because when, when you back up things look realism I, I, I love Renoir I okay. like Renoir's pictures too um uh, I, I like um Van Gogh's early stuff but not the last stuff because his used to be realism and then um <laughs> No, but yes. see, he yeah, got yeah, lead yeah. poisoning. That's why his changed because he was dying of lead poisoning. So mm. um, that's why his his some of his stuff changed too. But I like his early stuff. Even um, Picasso, he could paint just as good as Rembrandt. His portraits, one of his sister making her first communion, mm-hmm. stunning. It was just as good as any Rembrandt. And but then he changed. <laughs> yes. But um, I love his early stuff too. Yes, but. he changed. He went expressionistic. Then he went to abstracts. Yeah, well, they want to make money, mm-hmm. too. And, you know, a lot of them could paint just like, like, um, realism, just like Rembrandt and him, they could all they could all do it. Mm-hmm. So he had to go off a different way. I know artists today, I'll go to a show and I think, Oh, where's your realism? And they want to make money. So they've gone abstract. Um, mm-hmm. And the realism was stunning, but it's hard to sell realism in Canada. Oh, yeah. It sells in the States, but not in Canada. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So it's too bad. So yeah, what do you? Because f- when I go to a show, a lot of mine won't sell, but I look at the abstracts go right off the wall. It's like wow. Yeah, you you usually uh, are a jury, a lot of juried events that you're involved with. Yeah. Mean, what kind of art do you see mostly coming in uh, during those those uh, um, exhibitions? There- There'll be some realism, but it's mostly landscapes. Mm. Landscapes are big. People like landscapes. So more than half the show is always landscapes. And then um, another big part is abstract and a real small part is realism. Mm. Not a lot of realism. A lot of landscapes, though. People really like landscapes, but they want to recognize it, too. Like, you can't just sit here and make something in your head. They want to know where that spot is, um, you know, where you took that. Um, I've sat here and painted birch trees just out of my head, but then they've asked me where it is. So I don't know. I just sat here in my living room and painted a birch tree. Yeah. So, so I try to think, I'll just name a place. They think, oh, I remember that. It's okay. <laughs> like whatever. But, um, Beautiful. but no, I, I don't do a lot of landscapes, but people love landscapes. They really do. And landscapes sell. Um, okay. They sell cows sell too. pictures of cows and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I was in a show once and I've got all my realism there and the lady across from me, she had all cows and sheep and they were just flying <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> no one even turned their head to look at mine. Oh, wow. I guess I was in a country show or something. I don't mm. know. But, yeah. Oh, wow. You got to find the right market too. Very true. And yeah. It's hard to get in a gallery because the galleries are all um, modern 
most of them are, are modern galleries. I'll send my stuff and they'll say they love it, but they're a modern gallery. And my stuff is very classical, very old masters. Mm-hmm. So they're not looking for it. But Well, someone's going to look for it. They're going to find it. Oh, one day. <laughs> yes, they will. And where can folks find you online, Sandy? I'm on Instagram under Portraits by Gauguin. I do Instagram. Okay. And um, I don't have my new things on because I wait till they're done. And when the apple's done, it will be there. And then I've got seven that I've started as a surprise. Oh. And my horoscopes keep saying, don't tell anyone until they're ready. And they're not ready. So it's going to be a surprise. I got a whole series here going. But but I'm not going to show it till all seven are done. And then I'd like to have a solo show and show off and show them. But meanwhile, the apples, it will get done um, maybe in another month or two. And it will be on Instagram. The mm-hmm. last one is um, a portrait of a girl standing in the water. You'll see that one there. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, so the, the information will be in the show description, the show notes, so they can mm-hmm. find you and follow you and all that good stuff. Sandy, it was an absolute honor having you here today. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you, PT. Oh, and it was goodness. nice having you as a student. I have to see your latest stuff. See what you're uh, doing. Uh, I haven't really been digging too much into it as the way I want to, but hopefully very soon. Okay. Hopefully Great. very soon. Well, that's um, good. Thank you. Thank you for this. Yes, and thank you as well. All the very, very best. Okay, thank you. You too. All right. And everybody keep painting. Do your own thing. There's no right or wrong to painting. You just do what makes you happy. And no one can say it's wrong. Um, it's, it's fun. Lots of fun. There you go. Yeah. Painting equals fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, PT. Bye. Bye. You are listening to Journaling with PT and a conversation with fine artist Sandy McKenzie lovely to have her on the podcast and to have a conversation please follow her her information is in the show notes follow the podcast subscribe lovely having you here today the beautiful theme music playing in the background is by multi-talented artist Zendo Bermelo on classical guitar and cello The name of the piece is Preludio. Check him out in the show notes as well. Today's entry is dedicated to the lives of two cousins who left us recently in Quincy James Dean and Clandestine Miranda. To very sweet people, beautiful people. Such a blessing to have them. Life goes on, their spirits will go on too. Thank you again, and stay tuned.